How's it going YouTube? We're here with a quick and educational video on how to turn your old Dell into a gaming PC in 2023. Now you may have one of these old Dell Precisions or Optiplexes. This one in particular is a 3630. Uh, it has a PCI Gen 3 uh, lane and we are going to use this Radeon 6650 XT to hopefully game on it a little bit. So let's see how it goes. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this Precision. Um, it has two little switches on the side and then a lever that you pull to remove the side plate. Um, this side plate has a couple scuffs and stuff on it. It was probably in an office under a desk. Um, so we are going to recase it with this Corsair 4000D Airflow. And then we also have a couple Corsair SP120 Elite fans. Now, inside your Precision, most of them, and the Alienwares are pretty similar, are going to have a hinged system like this. There is, like I said, a switch that you will pull to lift up the power supply. And under, underneath the power supply, you will be able to get access to the components that we will be harvesting today for our build. Inside, you will have uh, your motherboard, your stock graphics card, uh, your cooler, and possibly your RAM and your SSD or HD, whatever hard drive setup you're using. One of the first things I'm going to do with this Dell is I'm going to remove the power supply. Uh, in today's build, the Dell came with a 460 watt power supply and we are going to be reusing it with our current build. I have actually built another one of these PCs with the exact same parts, uh, slightly different RAM configuration, but the same power supply and graphics card, and it seems to work just fine. The graphics card doesn't pull more than 200 watts, and the CPU, I believe, is a 65 watt. So you stay pretty well under that 460 watt uh, limit on this power supply. Now to remove the power supply, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the four pin CPU connector, which is located at the top left of the motherboard and the 24 pin power supply located on the right side. They can easily be removed by simply pushing the clips. The 24 pin power can be a little trickier and may require a wiggle. Be very gentle. It shouldn't require a lot of force, but sometimes they can get a little stuck. Once you have your four pin and your 24 pin power supply connectors disconnected, you're going to want to gently feed them up into the battery compartment tray. The 24 pin can be a little difficult. You may want to use both hands to feed it through. The four pin, just be careful. It may have connectors, uh, latches that go either direction where it feeds through. Uh, simply disconnect them if it does. This one looks like it was already disconnected. We will need to go underneath. Actually, what we will do is disconnect the uh, system fan on the top a while. It is simply a four pin connector and it just pulls right off. And it's a little, little fiddly. There is also the intruder switches that you could disconnect at the same time here, which would make this a little easier. But we will get to those in another part. So with that disconnected, we're going to do the same thing. Just feed it right up in. 
doesn't have to be really perfect. And then you're going to want to reclose your door, at least partially. It doesn't have to be the whole way, maybe halfway to three quarters. And then you will need a Phillips head screwdriver. There are four screws on the back holding the power supply in. One, two, three, four. And for slightly larger power supplies, it looks like they have a retainer, a wall right here, kind of instructing you also how to use your slot for your uh, drives. Uh, we will start with removing these two screws. With these two screws removed, you will have access to all of your spare SATA and PCI power cables. Then we will come around to the front and undo these four. Fortunately, I am not using the LTT screwdriver. I have not gotten one yet, though I imagine they would make this a lot easier with the ratcheting action. Now with these four screws removed, you may want to slightly hold your power supply so it doesn't shift down. Now you may want to fully close your power supply all the way up and you can then remove your power supply. And it should just slide right out, careful of all the wires and you will now have your power supply free. So we will set that aside until we are ready to use it. Now that you have the power supply fully removed from the case, you will want to begin disconnecting all of the surrounding components and cables from the motherboard. We will begin with the graphics card that came with this system, which is a Radeon WX3100. It is a workstation card. To remove it, you will have to push down on the PCI port. It has a little clip. In this case, it has a little blue clip that you will push down with your thumb. After you do that, then you can gently pull the card up. And it may, again, require just a little wiggle. Kind of makes you nervous when you do it. Put that little case back in. And then we will go around. This original system must have came with a SATA uh, SSD. So we will remove that SATA connector. It has a USB 3.0. I believe it's a 20 pin, so we will remove that. I uh, believe this is a USB-C on the front, which you will want to use your fingernail to very gently pull the corner. In fact, this one has a pull tab, so we can use that, which is very handy. And it looks like maybe a USB 2.0. In fact, I think this one is an SD card specific. You can't use it as a USB 2.0. It's slightly smaller. Um, I actually ran into that issue. It looks like the same configuration as a USB 2.0, but it is actually slightly smaller. We'll move around to the proprietary cable, the power connector at the top right. If we orientate this as you would probably be looking at it, it will be at your top right. And then we will also remove the tiny anti-intruder switch, which it goes to this button right here. So you can just go ahead and push those slightly out of the way. 
we will actually need to go back and remove some of these cables from the case to use in our 4000D. So now with those cables disconnected, you can begin to go around with your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the screws to the motherboard so that you can lift it away. You missed a HD audio connector down here. And then also the front internal speaker, which is another unique thing that these Dells come with that you will want to reuse. Uh, you can tuck it away in the basement of your 4000D, but you will want to probably keep that internal speaker, which is right up in the front right here. So once you're done, like I said, just push all of your cables slightly away from your motherboard so it will be ready to easily lift out. One final thing you may need to do uh, before you actually take your motherboard out is this little USB-C connector on the back. Uh, it is connected with two Phillips heads and connected to the motherboard. So that will need to come off to remove the IO shield. Before you begin removing the eight motherboard screws, you will need to come to the back IO plate and remove the two screws that connect the VGA connector and the USB-C connector to the motherboard. This will be done with a flathead to turn these small screws and a small Phillips head for the USB-C. And they are very tiny screws, so be careful not to lose them. Unfortunately, we likely will not reuse this USB-C with the new build, but they may be handy in the future. That will then free this card, and we can go ahead and lift that away from the motherboard. Now we will go on to remove the two screws, which look to be finger tight now, from the rear IO shield. And that I believe should free up all of our components from the back plate to remove from the case. We will now begin removing the eight Phillips head screws that hold the motherboard into the case, onto the standoffs. We will start with this top left corner. I don't think it really matters which one you start with. Uh, just be very careful when you do it, not to damage the motherboard or to lose any of the screws. And I think you are advised to work around in a X type pattern, in, in the star pattern as they, they say to relieve the pressure equally from the motherboard. A lot of these screws don't feel like they have a lot of tension on them, on this one in particular, so I don't know how much it would matter in this case, but every case is different. Just take your time while you do this. Of eight. It's not a very hard process, but again, just take your time. If for any reason you are using your onboard integrated graphics, they are located right here. On this die, you will want to be very careful that you do not damage that.
I was gonna say I'm missing one more, but there's one more in the top corner right here. Be very careful with this one. There are a lot of important pins for your power connector next to it. And that should be the last one. Now we are going to gently holding your cooler uh, and I usually support it on the sides. Give it just a little bit of a wiggle Just to see how connected it still is if there's any problematic points the uh, Standoffs on, that are built into the case or screwed down into the case will have uh, a little bit of like a Rivet that they sit into so your motherboard will kind of pop up out of place a little bit it is not uncommon for there to be a little bit of glue on these stock I.O. plates. They really are not designed to be removed. So just be very gentle. Again, working these cables away from the motherboard. Don't hang them up on any pins. And just gently pull out and away. And we will push the case. Oh, I just lost a screwdriver, but that's okay. And then we will set the motherboard down on our work plate, just like so. Now that we have the motherboard entirely removed from the old case, we will begin to give it just a little bit of cleaning. This one has a good bit of dust and debris built up on it, as you can probably see on the fan, around the integrated graphics, and underneath the existing heatsink. So what I'm going to do, you can use canned air, or uh, what I like to do is just gently brush it with a very, very soft, uh, um, paintbrush um, kind of again it will get into some of the spaces just a little better again make sure it's a very soft uh, paintbrush brand new one um, doesn't have to be perfect it also kind of helps loosen up some of the dust that wouldn't otherwise get blown off um, helps you kind of get into some of these spots here especially for the fans. It is great to get into fans. I'm sure this is really awful to, to breathe in. You should probably wear a mask. So we will come back as soon as I have this all finished up. Now that you have your board cleaned up, you want to get your M.2 and install it. You may have already seen that I had an M.2 installed in this computer, but it did not come with any storage or any RAM. So you can install your M.2 by simply sliding it into the slot and gently pushing it down. It's a little tricky. I like to kind of hold the screw onto the mini screwdriver as I push down to kind of guide it. Uh, unfortunately, my screwdriver is not magnetic, so that may help a little bit, but then just gently screw it into the standoff until it is snug. And that is all there is to installing an M.2 SSD.
Now that we have the motherboard and power supply removed from your Dell case, it is time to begin opening our Corsair 4000D. Now you will want to be careful when you're opening your case as it does contain a tempered glass side panel. Now, in the past I found a trick you can kind of do is to gently lay the box onto its top which will be the front of the case and then simply pull the top off. Then we will stick these all in here. Get rid of this box for the time being. And this is our Corsair. 4000D. Now that you have your new 4000D unboxed, now you're going to remove the tape and take the front tempered glass side panel off and store it somewhere safe. You can also probably go ahead and do it with the top dust screen as well, which is simply a magnetic attachment. So we will keep that little piece of tape on for the peel later. The front side panel is removed. You may want to hold it on the top with your hand. Uh, it has two screws on the back rear, which usually are captive, but that one looks like it may not be. Normally they just kind of dangle. They don't actually fully come all the way out. For some reason, this top one, it looks like the little captive thing may be not quite all the way there, which is fine. Doesn't affect functionality or anything. And then you'll want to remove your tempered side panel and place it somewhere safe. Now that you've removed your side glass panel, you will want to do the same process with the back panel, the metal back panel. It also has two captive thumb screws and will simply pull off. With the back panel removed, you will be able to see your basement and your wire management system. Once we are in the basement, I would recommend removing the hard drive caddy as it will give you more room for wire management, for, for uh, power cable management. Once inside the back of the case, in the basement, you will see the hard drive caddy. It is held in with four thumb screws, two on either side. All 
I'm actually wrong. It is only two thumb screws uh, on the right side, and then it simply slides out. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Again, a little fiddly. They include a piece of uh, foam on top of it to keep it from scraping. But there we go. Go ahead and pull these wires tucked in. And that should come away. For the time being, we will stick our wires back in. They will go to your front panel, your uh, power, your USB connectors on top of the case, which is right here. And now we will begin installing the power supply. Now we're going to reinstall our 460 watt Dell power supply into our new Corsair 4000D case. We're going to start by, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna kind of stick all the cables back in here first and it should easily slide into the back of the basement. And then you're gonna kind of pull it forward. You will see couple screws and the trick is just kind of get one or two started there we go Now you may notice that I have appeared to install this power supply upside down as the uh, fan usually would go on the underside, but this is going to be in an area with a lot of pet hair, so we didn't really want to have the air being sucked in through the bottom. Um, so this case actually does have ventilation in the top of the basement as well. Um, so that will just kind of reduce uh, reduce the overall pet uh, hair intake. <laughs> Get this last little screw in here. This one's a little off center. But that's not too bad. Might need to loosen another one up. It's kind of the issue in doing it this way, really we should, it's much easier to do when the PC is standing upright. There we go. See it just shifted just a little bit. And now we can easily get that last screw in. Then as they recommend, go on the X pattern. That is about all there is to installing your power supply. Next, we will move on to the motherboard installation. Now that you have your power supply installed, you are ready to begin installing your motherboard. Before we can install the motherboard, we need to open a few supporting accessories. Saved you guys the unboxing the, the unbagging from Amazon so uh, you get to share in the opening. So first as you've already seen we have a couple more Corsair SP120 Elite fans. These are I believe the exact same fans that come on the Corsair 4000D. It comes with uh, two fans now. I thought it only came with one, but it actually comes with two fans. Um, so we may not actually need one of these fans that I got. So that will be nice. Now for the important package. Inside here, we have a pack of braided cable extensions. Um, they will help the power supply kind of reach up to the 20 pin and it'll just look a lot nicer than having the mustard cables. You'll have the nice braided black cables inside. So we have the 
brand new cable extensions. All of this stuff is on Amazon, if you couldn't tell. Um, next up, we have some build your own uh, IO shields. Unfortunately, the Dell does not come with a removable IO shield, so you will have to clip out your own IO shield to uh, pop in here, which shouldn't be too, too bad to do. So you can get away with running it with no IO shield, but they say you will experience more magnetic interference, um, maybe like wireless mouse issues and things like that. So it is probably a good idea to pick a pack of these up for, I think it was like $12. And then finally, we have a tiny little heat sink for the VRMs on the uh, motherboard. So we'll get that out of the static sleeve here. I don't really know why the Dell didn't come with this. It is a factory option that mounts right to it um, with the same standoffs that are on the motherboard. I think maybe the USB-C uh, that we removed from the motherboard from the back may have interfered with this, um, but we are definitely going to be using this. So now we will go ahead and create our IO shield. Uh, the Dell did come with a little kind of stencil um, backplate, pseudo backplate, so maybe we can incorporate that somehow, either as a stencil or uh, just as like a cushion. We'll see. back with our completed IO shield. I only cut out uh, three spots which will be used for the VGA. I mean normally we're not going to use the VGA but unfortunately it does uh, slightly protrude from the from the motherboard a little bit so it will stick through. Um, we did have to cut that out and then we also cut out our uh, three and a half millimeter headphone jack and the USB ports. Um, we did leave our display ports, our onboard display ports covered. That way it would kind of encourage people not to use them. Um, and I also went ahead and left the old keyboard and mouse covered as well because we will be uh, using USB on this build. Um, most people these days use USB. It would be pretty simple to cut out uh, the rest of the IO if you would need it. Um, and again, this was a pretty simple easy solution and now we will go ahead and just simply pop it into our spot in the case and that should complete our IO shield. The next step we will need to move some of these very small risers up into the correct position for our motherboard. As you'll see when you put in the motherboard and line up the standoffs, there are a few pre-installed, uh, but there are a couple others that will need to be moved up to properly seat. I believe it is one of these two locations. I will have to double check. Um, I think we might even be able to line it up right now. I believe it's the lower one. Yep, it, it does look like it's the lower one. So we will need to move a standoff into this position right here. Now I couldn't find really anything better to remove the standoffs than an adjustable, which absolutely is not ideal to do this. You almost need like a uh, bicycle spoke wrench. I'm sure they make a specific tool. <laughs> these things are tedious again just as before take your time you don't want to mar your case up this lower part of your case uh, will be seen uh, I thought we could get that one I think we got that one. And then you will see it say M, A, M, E, and uh, 
what, what is the other one? E, and it, it'll tell you right here, remark, A is ATX, M is micro ATX, I is ITX, and E is EATX. So we want to go with the micro ATX positions, which is M. And I believe that is right here. We determine for the second position. Now make sure you don't over tighten these. Uh, you will see them kind of straighten up uh, when you're screwing them in. They may be slightly off center and then when they are tight, they will be upright. Just be really careful not to over tighten them or to accidentally cross thread. So now we will go ahead and finish this up. See if we can do the little standing wrench trick. Yes, we can. Very nice. <laughs> careful not to scratch it. See right there, you'll start to feel just a little bit of tension, and that one is tight. So, very nice, and that should be the standoffs that we now need to install the motherboard. Now we are finally prepared to reinstall the motherboard into the new case. Now that you have all of your standoffs, you will want to grab your motherboard, buy its cooler, and very gently line up it's IO with your IO shield. It may require a slight angle and then you will want to find your standoff points. Uh, this case includes a post right here in this position down here which will act as a very good guide for you and you are good to go. Now we will reinstall seven screws because this one features a eighth post instead of a screw mount, you will only reinstall seven screws instead of the eight that you had originally taken out. So don't freak out if you have a spare screw at the end, um, that's usually where it has come from. So now we will start with our screwdriver and I like to start in the corners. So we will get this one in first. This top right corner can be a little tricky. Be really careful with the uh, power pins. We will move down into this corner. The, like I said, go diagonal, drop it on in there. Sometimes these standoffs can be a little weird getting started since they've never really been threaded before. So just take it easy. If uh, it feels like it's cross th threading, don't force it. Just working our way around here. You don't have to really put a lot of a lot of torque or anything into these screws. You just kind of want them to be snug. Move over to this guy over here by the SSD. Right there, just kind of be really easy, make sure it's going down straight. First, it wasn't quite going in right there, but again, don't force it. Got one more hiding up here that we're gonna get up between our RAM and our CPU fan connector. Tried to give me a little trouble, but no trouble. There we go. And on to the last one over here by our three and a half millimeter and our PCI lane. Again, just to familiarize, familiarize you guys at home, this is where your graphics card will be installed, the top slot. 
Uh, usually it will have some type of push down connector to secure it. And that will be for your graphics card. So now we're gonna just go around, make sure all of them are snugged up. Sometimes if you tighten one, another one could come slightly loose. So we'll go around, make sure everybody's got good tension. Don't want any of that bad tension. There we go. And that should install your motherboard into your case. We'll make sure our IO shield is looking good and everything is coming along. The next step, we will start to uh, wire in our fans and then we will begin cable management. Now that you have your new motherboard all installed in your brand new Corsair case, in this particular build, I'm going to upgrade the stock air cooler that came with the Precision. With this Preci Precision 3630, it comes with an air cooler that looks like this. I have a slightly larger air cooler that came off of a Optiplex. Uh, even being a smaller form factor Optiplex, it used a considerably thicker cooler. It probably is about 30%, 25 to 30% thicker. Um, as you can, you can see, they're, they're the same mount and everything. Uh, I guess because of the hinge uh, closure from the old case, it didn't quite have the room for this type of cooler to close down and still prop properly ventilate, um, which we will not have that issue in this new case. So we will go ahead and remove this old cooler and we will install our slightly larger cooler. The first thing I'm going to do to remove this stock Dell cooler is to remove the fan. To remove the fan, there will be four small Phillips head screws. And you're gonna need a somewhat small screwdriver to get to them. Um, they, it has to fit down into the uh, shaft of the fan. Oops. One, sometimes these things can be really stuck on too, so. As always, just take your time, go slow, and don't get too frustrated. If you need to take a break, always feel free to walk away and come back. It beats damaging your computer. Pesky pesky screw there we'll get that with the magnetic tip maybe there we go fortunately like I've said I don't have the line of screwdriver and I'm not sure that it could reach these screws oh we got one that's on there there we go no trouble and then we also will need to disconnect the four pin fan connector from the top and then that fan should lift right away. Now we are going to do a very similar process with the cooler. It also has four connectors uh, or four Phillips head connectors and you will absolutely want to do these uh, in cross order. And this one is really on there too. I have to use my slightly larger screwdriver. Loosen it up just a little bit. This one is really stuck on there. Do not advise you to do this at home.
just need a little bit to loosen it up. Now, I think most of our tension should be relieved at this point. That post looks like it's free. That post also looks like it is free. I think that might do it. A couple more turns for good luck. I can feel, we'll see. This is the moment of truth for the thermal paste. So. Oh, I have a few still hanging on. Oh, yep. It's a little bit surprisingly yeah, it's pretty dry we can give it a peek this is one I pulled off another computer definitely more but uh, yeah you, you can really tell uh, all the dust that got into this So now that we got that stock cooler off, you can really tell uh, how much dust was left in this. I can kind of hold that up a little bit for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off. Uh, but first we will go ahead and clean off the CPU. Um, what you're gonna wanna do on the CPU is use 91% um, alcohol to clean off the thermal paste. Uh, they say you should use like a fiberless uh, cloth. I just use paper towels and it has been fine for me. Um, so do that at your own risk, but it seems to work okay. And then we're just going to kind of buff that old thermal paste off and see if maybe we can get some of that nasty dust and stuff too off the socket. And I haven't mentioned yet in this build, this is an 8th gen Intel i5-8600. It is the non-K variant uh, being in a Dell. It does not support overclocking. Um, but for a couple year old chip, it is very capable for gaming still. Um, and lots of good desktop usage. There's still a good couple years of life in this uh, CPU. It is a six thread, six core. It does not support hyper threading, unfortunately, which would have been really, really great. Um, but still a really good CPU. Once again, I'll just show the size upgrade between the cooler that came off of this precision and the one that we are going to upgrade to. This was out of a Optiplex 3050. So we will just go ahead Get the old cooler out and we will clean off the thermal paste from the new cooler. Probably should have done this when I, when I took it off, but. You wanna get this surface pretty clean. I have a really nice contact patch for your new CPU. looks pretty good. We will also go ahead and just kind of brush this out a little bit. I did kind of pre-clean it. They're, they're a little hard to clean out. Again, the paintbrush works really, really great. As you can see, I'm just throwing this all right on my table. Great life choice. But, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. Doesn't have to be super perfect. It's gonna attract dust pretty quickly. 
And we may upgrade to a cooler master or a more aftermarket cooler. This is just what we had, it was free, and uh, it is a slightly larger cooler, so why not incorporate it? So one final thing that we're gonna do also is we are going to install our VRM heatsink, and that will go right here on these two screws, and it will sit just like this. So it will cover those VRMs just like that, and it will allow the VRMs to disperse the heat. Now we are going to reinstall the screws into the fan for our cooler, which is very simple, same process in reverse. Now finally we will install the VRM over here onto our or our heat sink onto the VRMs. So what we will do is we will simply remove the double-sided tape. And we will line it up with the connection spot. And go ahead and secure it down. Again, go back and forth. You don't want to tighten one side all the way. Shouldn't be too much work. And again, I think maybe this USB-C that was connected here might have interfered somehow with it. I'm not really sure. This part cost, I want to say 10 to $15. Uh, I think it might have been like 15 bucks. So maybe they just wanted to save the money on this heat sink, but I think not only is it a slight cosmetic upgrade, it is also a huge functionality upgrade. And then we will also pull this tiny little, little sticker off the side. Eh, well, I guess we'll leave that for now. Shouldn't affect the performance. And then we will just kind of eye up our cooler. We're not going to install that yet. Obviously we need uh, thermal paste. Just kind of get an idea how it's going to look, you know. So then we'll give it a final wipe and we will begin to install our cooler. Now we are ready to begin the thermal paste installation. I'm going to start just by cleaning the surface one last time with 91% ISO just to make sure it's nice and clean, best that we can, we can have it. Hit the cooler one last time too. There's even, even still just a little more that I did get off. Might not have made a difference, but can't hurt. And then we have Corsair's XTM 50 thermal paste. It comes with a really nice, uh, like kind of shield to install it. Um, we're not going to need that where we're going. On these big jobs, we just kind of tend to just really wing it. Now what I like to do is just kind of do an X with a couple dots. So we'll just 
do our little X. And a couple dots. And then I kind of like, and this is probably going to be controversial. I kind of like to pre spread my thermal paste just to make sure that we get it in all the right areas. I know I'm going to get probably comments telling me you shouldn't, you don't need to, that's bad. But honestly, I've built a couple PCs and I have had no issues. This isn't a very, this 8600 also is not a very power hungry CPU. So it's fine. Make sure we get it all the way over the IHS. Don't need to go too crazy. Also don't really want to make a mess. It will squish out more as the commenters I'm sure are going to tell me when you tighten it down. But hey, this gives you peace of mind. This XTM50 is also pretty thick. Um, so it might not squish out the best. <clears throat> and then we, <clears throat> excuse me, are just going to come in here and drop our cooler on. And then remember to go diagonal when you tighten down, give it a couple screws, jump over to the other side. There we go. Coming over here. Get this one. We're just going to go into there snug. You don't want to over tighten it. They kind of, with the stock cooler, have a built-in stop point, so you will know. Just don't go really hard. You will feel it hit that stop. You will kind of see it at the top of the threads. If you look down the side, you'll see that right there, it just kind of hit the stop point. And that's all there is to installing the cooler. Give it a little wiggle check. Looks good to go. And then we will also clip in the CPU fan temporarily. We will need to run a splitter for that, but just to get it out of the way for the time being, we will clip that in. The next step after we have our CPU cooler installed is we will install our RAM. And for this build, we just have some RAM I harvested out of an Optiplex 3050. Um, I believe it was a 3050, but it's Kingston uh, 2666. And that is the fastest uh, RAM speed that this CPU will run at. So right now we uh, have two sticks of eight gigabyte for 16 total. Um, we may up that in the future but right now that's just kind of what we got so it is going to go in the white slots the second and fourth slot away from the CPU so we'll go ahead and just line that up make sure your slots are open and that you don't have them in cross slots which I gotta do right now make sure they're nice and open 
And then once you're in there, be sure that you're in and use both thumbs and push straight down until you hear a click. And make sure that both sides are locked in. Uh, you should hear a click. Sometimes you won't, but make sure that the little swing arms are latched in to the sides of the ram. As you can see on the sides here, there are tiny little notches. Make sure the swing arms are in. Um, and the RAM usually faces the CPU, so it will go in like so. You just want to kind of be a little careful and take it slow. There we go, and push in both thumbs and you hear both clicks. And then I kind of like to close up the ones that aren't in use either. So after that, we will move on to cable management. Now that you have your motherboard installed with your CPU cooler and your RAM in your new case, we are going to move on to cable management. To make cable management really clean and sleek, I've opted to use these cable extensions. Um, I think in this case, you actually kind of have to use a cable extension to reach in here to the 24 pin power. I think this stock 24 pin doesn't quite reach all the way up. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the max right there. You can see it right here. It doesn't quite reach all the way up there. So I've opted to use these braided cables. Uh, they are Kato, Kodo. Uh, they're on Amazon, just a braided cable extension. You need two cables, the 24 pin, uh extension and also the pci extension for the graphics card unfortunately it does not include the uh, cpu connector but i can verify that the cpu connector is in fact long enough still to fit all the way in and connect up here so we shouldn't have an issue with that and it's already black and brown so it's pretty sleek um I guess you have to kind of make a compromise when you're recasing a Dell motherboard. So to use these cable extensions, all you have to do is find the connector end and mate it up to its matching connector, which I think I have this one backwards. Yep. There we go. So it will just kind of slide in and snap together just like that and then what we will do is we will feed it up through here so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the i think it's yellow and black pci and what we're going to want to do is use this double one and can they will Oh, I had it backwards again. <laughs> Snap in. And I think we should have put those in together, but hey, there it is. Snapped in. So we will come around to the front and begin feeding them up through. Go ahead and just kind of all these things we may want to kind of prioritize we'll put the 24 pin on top that one's going to go in first and unfortunately the 24 pin i have found that you can't really it's too rigid the the 90 that you're going to have to turn it to get to the motherboard is too sharp to actually get uh the like detanglers in there so you'll see what i mean as soon as i connect it it's just a little too sharp of an angle to really get a detangler in so around the front here we will just go ahead and bend this a little bit i kind of like to pull it all the way through bend it in to connect it And wiggle it right down in. Went right in. And then we can kind of 
feed it through to the back. Get some of that excess chucked away. Let's see, this is what I was talking about, this kind of 90 that it does to form back in, you can't very well get any detangler in there. So you just kind of kind of leave it be a bit of a braided bunch. <laughs> this is the uh, four pin CPU power that I was talking about. You don't have an extension for this one, I believe so, but it does in fact reach all the way up here. You can kind of fit it through the second one and it will also clip in to that top left corner pretty easily. And I will bring that around and show you that it is in fact clipped in, kind of already has that natural bend. And for cable management, you can just start to kind of tuck, just kind of tuck your cables down in here. We'll have to kind of see how this harness connects and lays. I think it will just kind of lay flat against the door. Um, but we will see, it, it may need to come up over here maybe. That probably is an option as well, like right over here. And that should be fine. So we will see what we get when we get a little closer to buttoning things up. And one final thing you can do, take, you take it underneath here, is feed your PCI graphics card power up into your bay and just kind of let it sit right down here in the case for your uh, graphics card. All right, before we finish up cable management, we do need to harvest a few more parts from our old Dell case. I hope you didn't get rid of it yet. Um, we need just a couple USB cables that went to the front IO. Um, unfortunately, the bad news is some of your front IO will not work on the top of your new Corsair case. Um, you'll kind of have to hide uh, some of these cables in your basement and I will show you that in just a second. So let's go ahead and get these cables out of here and I will show you how to uh, hide your secret cables in the future. So we will go ahead and start. I think the, the main thing we're gonna have to probably do unfortunately is remove this front caddy, which I had not done yet. Um, but let's go ahead and get that out of there. It's just two screws. Get two more free screws. So we will go ahead, get them out. No big deal. And that drive should just slide right on out along with the SATA. And then we can get that out of here. Then another thing that we can do right now is you'll need to take this front fascia off, this plastic fascia. There are three clips here. So just go ahead and pull them up gently and then it just kind of swings off and away. So we can get that out of the way for a second. And in the front here, you will see this kind of metal bit housing all of your front IL. They actually house built-in cables. So we will pop that out. There we go. It's really a unique design how they feed all these through that it just holds them right in place. Existing power connector button, and you just kind of squeeze in here. They're a little fiddly. There we go. A little wiggle. Again, be careful. Go slow. Take your time. There are some clips on the top, too, right there. And then it will pull right through the front. Just get it. Feed it right through, be careful not to snag it. And if you do snag it, don't just rip it through. I don't think you, you're not going to need that cable, um, but you will want to keep, and let me swing this open to give a better view, this little, eye, this little intruder button and it slides 
back towards the front of the case. So it slides backwards like that towards the front of the case and you will want to set this somewhere safe because you will need it and there's a trick to keeping that uh, from triggering the uh, BIOS. So now with this front fascia, you can kind of lay the PC, the old case on its back and there are a couple screws, two, yeah, two of them that hold it in place. Go ahead and knock those out. Okay, it might only be one. Yep, I was right, it's only one screw. And then it should pull right through. Just again, be very careful with all of this stuff. You do not want to damage really any of these cables. So, careful to get them all through gently. And voila! Now the old case, the last thing remaining is the internal speaker, which again has a little clip and just pulls right out. And you can go ahead and free that. There's a little plastic clip down there that holds it in place. And then you have your little speaker. It's good for BIOS uh, testing and things like that if you um, are troubleshooting and maybe your IO isn't working, things like that. So it's good to have that little internal speaker and you can hide it in the basement of your new case. So the last thing left in your old case is probably your old top fan. And in that case, you can go ahead and just leave it. So close your old case up. And at this point, I believe you are completely done with it, but you may want to hold on to it just to be safe. So we will lock that in and get this out of the way and I'll show you what to do with your newly harvested cables. So now that you have the little box of cables off of the old case, what you're going to want to do is you're going to very gently uh, crack open this box. There are two tabs on the top side of it that pull away. Um, same way on the bottom, they, they both pull away and then the two side flaps will pull up. Um, there is really no great way to go about doing this. There, this definitely was not intended to be done. Um, so it is definitely a, a process to kind of get it done. Um, another way that you might be able to do it is with a flathead screwdriver. You can probably get it on the side here. Just be really careful not to do too much damage to it or yourself. Yeah, that looks like a good way to do it. It's just kind of bend it away like that. It's pretty soft metal, so once you get it pried off a little bit, it bends down with your thumb pretty easily. Ooh, see, that's a good way to accidentally get yourself in the fingers. So be careful when you do this. Again, there you go get it away a little bit and then it bends away really easily. You're not going to need this metal. You just kind of need to get this plastic inner box out. Be careful of the cables. It looks like there are also a couple clips um, that we will need to just pull up a little bit. They kind of bite into the body of the plastic, holding it in place. Um, we could probably also do the same thing here. Just kind of bend it up. Oop, lost my driver. There we go. Those sound like good sounds. All right, gently. <laughs> this might not sound like gently noises, but the gently is intensifying, believe me. All right. And we've now gotten that off. This box will have a couple clips on like the side. So same thing, this isn't too hard, just little clips. You're probably not going to be reusing this plastic uh, outer box. You, th there's individual boards inside here, which I will show you. Oh, there's so many plastic clips. One there, second one back here. I think there's a 
third one hiding maybe we'll go ahead and just gently pull it apart I've actually opened these before so I kind of know what to expect inside go ahead and what you're gonna do in here is grab these three USB they are one USB 3 and two USB 2 and they will go to your USB 20 pin on the front so we are going to take that and I believe that is all that we are going to be using um, there are an S that there is an SD card reader and a USB uh, C that you could connect and possibly hide in here as well so you can use that if you'd like uh, it is an individual board you may want to cover it and protect it it does come out there we go so you could use this one too. connect it and just kind of hide it somewhere in the back it won't reach all the way to your basement maybe you could get an extension but for this build we're just going to go ahead and leave it out so what you're going to want is the three usb port the the usb 3.0 and we are going to use that Now what we're going to do with your three USBs is connect the USB 3.0 to the motherboard. And you can tell one side will have a small notch in it and you will line that up with the notch on your mother on the motherboard. Be careful because these pins are very small. Uh, they are fragile so as always take your time. You, you can hear that clipped right in and now we're going to take these cables and we're going to kind of feed them into the back. It's definitely a two-handed job. So let's get this tucked. Kind of support the cable against the motherboard. Um, up in here where it's seated, you don't want to put too much pressure on it, so slowly work it down but protect the the base part here for sure and it doesn't have to be perfect it is kind of a a weird bend to get it in at first you may even want to kind of tuck it up above uh, your 24 pin power once you're finished but we'll go ahead and tuck those into our basement for later And we will get that cleaned up at the end when we do our final cable management. Now we're going to arrange our fans and install a couple of new fans. So first I'm going to start off by probably taking out this front fan and uh, I'm going to install these two new SP120 Elites, which are, I believe the same fan that comes in the case anyway, it's maybe slightly different. Um, the only difference I'm the only reason I'm going to install these two is because they have a black underside to them um, So they're just a little more stylish uh, And we will possibly keep this fan for other uses uh, This PC in the future may, might get a front AIO um, Otherwise, we're just going to leave the front open it's not going to need a lot in the way of cooling, so the two top fans exhausting and the one in the rear also exhausting should be plenty for this build. Um, so we will go from there. So taking the two fans out is pretty simple. What you're going to want to do is the front fascia on this simply pops off with four clips they are little kind of nubs that fit into sockets and you will also remove the dust screen and go ahead and for your purposes you may not remove uh, this fan at all and you may want to just go ahead and wire this one up or you may have other fans that you add it all depends on your build, but for this one, we're gonna go ahead and pull this fan out.
we would have done three fans in the front in taking. That would probably be ideal. If you have a lot of uh, pet hair or anything like that, like I had said earlier, you don't really want to be sucking in quite as much air. You're gonna really get that front uh, dust screen clogged pretty quickly, which it, it's nice that it's at least there and will block some of that dust. Um, but yeah, you, you will be cleaning that out pretty frequently if you have three intake fans. So now that we have that fan removed, we will set it aside and go ahead. One trick that you will need to do on these uh, new fans is they do not come threaded. So you will want to kind of tap them per se while they are out of the case before trying to screw them in when they are in the case. So we will go ahead and do that off camera. Now that we have our new fans fully tapped with screws, we are ready to install them into our case. For this build, I'm choosing to put both fans up top, exhausting the air out of the top of the case. So we can start by doing this by feeding the wire into the back where you would like it to go. And for this build, I think it's going to, we could either go through the furthest back one, which I think is what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead, very easily get that started. And then we'll feed it through. Yep, I think that's gonna be an ideal position. And it's gonna come out just a little bit, so it won't interfere with the PCI cable or anything like that. And you almost need a third arm to do it. And we will get this screw started. And this is where it's really, really helpful to have gotten them pre-tapped. Otherwise, you have to put a lot of pressure onto screwing these in, and it is not fun. There's no way I would be able to do this with my left hand if I had not pre-tapped them. So we can go ahead and do the X pattern. Do the two cross, and that will get that fan nice and snug in there. And we will do the same thing with the second fan. So I think we're going to run it like this, we decided, and Same deal, feed this right over top of the ram. It's a little awkward at this position. You at home are gonna have a lot easier time than me filming it. But we will put that right next to our other fan and get another one of those screws. started and the one across from it
And we'll go ahead and get these screws finished up and then we will be on to cable management. And now, as you might know, you only have two connectors on your motherboard for fans from the Dell. So what we're going to do is use two of these fan splitters. These are four pin, two four pin, and one of them acts as like a uh, kind of runoff and one is the primary. So you'll see one has four pins and one has three pins. So one of them may spin slightly faster and the one that you want to spin slightly faster, I would suggest putting on the four pin. Um, so we will go ahead and feed those through and do that. So right now I will need to disconnect the fan that we had previously connected. And these are going to connect like that. So feed them in and flip them. Is there also another one that's not great to bend. It kind of has a strange kink. What I might actually need to do is feed it in through the front instead. Maybe easier to just simply connect it. And then we will take the two and we will feed them into the back. Be a little fiddly. There you go. You can't really see it too much hidden up behind the fan. So we'll leave those two kind of dangle out and then we will do the same thing over here for our system fan. There we go. And this one, we'll see if we can also feed that towards the back. That should work out just fine. And those will just be your two standoffs for your fans. And then we will come around back. And we will take the, these two will be our system. And these two will be our CPU. So the primary CPU you are going to probably want on your four pin. So the little CPU, the one that we disconnected earlier, we will want to kind of bring that in and connect it to this four pin for the CPU. You might actually not reach all the way. You might have to do it up front. So bear with me a second. There we go. I'll pull the slack back towards here. It will just barely tuck behind. So we will look at tying that cable off when we're finished. And now we will want this second one for our CPU fan. So let's double check to make sure both of these are system. So the second one for the CPU fan is gonna to come to the back fan back here. Right, does that make sense? I think that's what we will do. So the back one back here will be not this connector, it will be this connector. So this connector is only a three pin and it will get plugged right into here. Like so. 
Then this one, which is our top system fan, would make sense to plug into the four pin since it is directly over the CPU. So we will bring that one over. Take your time with these two because the little metal pins are kind of fragile. This one's got a bent one already. I wonder if I did that or if it came like that. Maybe. We'll go ahead and connect this one and then I will get back to you with some cable management. One thing you might remember is the intruder switch that I talked about, which will activate if the door is taken off the case. To fold this switch, what I've kind of figured out to do, you could probably tape it down um, or you can also kind of stuff it into this first cable management. And if you can just pull that out a little bit. When you get it in here, you can pull it tight and it will actually push the sensor all the way down. Just like that. That should be tight enough. And that will depress that sensor to fool the system into keeping that intruder switch uh, like shut. So you can take your glass panel off the front and it won't you, you won't need that intruder switch anymore. So anyway, there's just a couple of final odds and ends to cable manage. We have most of it already done. Uh, just a couple of zip ties. There are small like points in here, like right here is a couple uh, for zip ties to affix cables to the chassis. Uh, and I also kind of routed our CPU power through some of our drive bays right here. They kind of had little holes for cables. So it was a good fit to kind of manage it down there. And then we are getting pretty close to installing our graphics card. And then we will wrap things up. cable management, you are now ready to install the graphics card. We have chosen for this build the Radeon 6650 XT. It is an XFX Merc 308. So first step, we are going to go ahead and just get everything kind of pulled away. And then we are going to lay our PC on its back. I've already reinstalled the back plate so that none of the wires are exposed in the back. Installing the graphics card is really quite simple. The first thing that you're going to want to do is remove the top two slot covers. They're just held in with two thumb screws and then they just slide right out. You're probably gonna to wanna to stow these with the uh, carriers that came in your basement, um, just in case you ever need them in the future. Get two of those out, keep your thumb screws, and then with your graphics card, what you're going to want to do is make sure your lane is open and simply guide it down into the lane. Just be really careful when you do this. Looks like I may need to move the USB 3 up slightly more. I said you might have some issues here. There we go. I think that's perfect now. All right, let's give it a go again. So we're just gonna kind of slot this right in. Make sure the back part is behind the motherboard. And that should be it. Now push down about equally right where the uh, lane enters and you should hear it kind of snap into place. If you don't hear it, at least just make sure that it is seated. A couple little presses and then we are going to bring our PCI power connector up and we're just going to go ahead 
and plug that in. And there we go. Once we get this upright, we'll make sure all of those pins are fully seated. Feels pretty good. And then we will get our cable stays installed. One final thing we almost forgot is first you'll want to pull your graphics card up just slightly to prevent it from sagging and put in these thumb screws. Some heavier graphics cards will come with a uh, anti-sag bar that goes underneath of them. This one doesn't seem to need it. It's not super heavy, uh, like the 4090 and cards like that, but it might not be a bad idea to have one just in case. But the thumb screws seem to keep it pretty well in place. So after this, we will get our cable Detangler is attached and we will wrap things up. All right guys, getting ready to boot the PC for the first time. Gonna plug it in and we should see some type of response. Oh, that's a good sign. All the fans are running. It's gonna do some RAM training first, so it's not going to come on right away. It is gonna have to turn on and off a few times. That is completely normal. See, there it just shut off. It's gonna turn right back on again. There it goes. And it's gonna do this a couple of times. And then depending on your keyboard, you may see a light come on on your keyboard somewhere after it cycles through a few times and then you'll see it actually turn on to the BIOS. So we kicked on a couple times. Should be getting close to posting. It's a really good sign. Our graphics card has power. And there is the light on our keyboard. That is signaling that we should be posting soon. Dell, that's a really good sign. And we are in the BIOS. Unfortunately, when you uh, replace the power button on the top with these pins up here, you are going to get a power button failure. Uh, you can configure it to just pass that right along. Uh, and with the motherboard fan failure, that was only because we disconnected the fan. So when we reboot that, it should go away. But this is where I'm going to leave you guys on this video. If you'd like another video on how to set up your BIOS, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again for watching, guys. One problem I just had was I realized my M.2 was not actually fully seated down into the slot down there. I didn't have my drive recognized, so I just took the graphics card out and I had to fully slot my SSD, my M.2, into the slot. So just be careful that it is fully seated down there, as I just did not. So now we will see if we get a good boot. Still doing the RAM training cycles again. So now we should get the light. Yep. Just blinked. Now let's see what our monitor says. Okay, that's all normal. 
for the first boot. So let's get into the system preferences and we will see now if it recognizes our SSD. And system information. Ah, yes, now it says mass storage. Before it said empty. So very good. Let's see if it has info and it does. Okay, so right there is our M.2, excellent. All right, and we just reset and now we are booting. This drive, this M.2 already had Windows installed. If you do not have it installed, you will have to go through a uh, USB stick to install Windows onto your M.2. Seeing it just restarted, I think. I got to do this again. F1. We'll clear some of those error codes, possibly in another video. And there it is, guys. We are at the login screen. And that completes our build with the 6650 XT and the 8600 out of a Dell Precision 3630. Thanks for watching, guys. And there you have it, guys. That's how you turn your old Dell Precision or Optiplex into a gaming PC in 2023. Fully equipped with Radeon 6650 XT and even utilizing the stock 460 watt power supply. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. I may make an additional video on how to install Windows on your new PC, or even in the future, how to add RGB fans or lighting and how to control it with uh, your USB that is hidden in your basement. So if you wanna see that, please drop a comment. Uh, if you like the video, dislike the video, tell me what I can do differently or what you would like to see in the future. And thanks for watching guys.